Bro. I hate these, uh... These phones just got me. Listen, I'm going to tell you where I was at. I was like 10 minutes into a story. And I'm sitting here holding the button down, recording myself, like pressing, like, you know, like on Instagram uh, video, you got to press and hold the button to record it, right? So I'm doing the same thing. And I'm sitting here trying to make this YouTube video and I'm uploading it from the YouTube app and I'm sitting here pressing and holding it. The whole time it's not even. So I got to start this whole story over again. <laughs> All right. Anyways. All right. So. <sighs> take two. All right. So I'm going to start the morning of. Um, at the time, I'm living in uh, Northern Virginia with a family member. I'm going to school full time at a community college. Also, I'm working full-time for the government in Washington, D.C. So it's like a whole experience. Like, I'm in the city every day. Like, I'm going to school all the time. Like, you know, and I had a bike and I had a car. So uh, the bike I had at the time was a 2000... I think a 2000 or 2003. I can't remember. Early 2000. GSXR 600. It was black, silver, gray, like those types of colors. Nasty. But I had the undertail on. I had it all decked out. Like it was vicious. I had the smoke windscreen. I had the seats. I had like everything done to that bike. Like pretty much that you could really kind of do to something. Case covers, like clutches, like all types of stuff. It was lower down. Like it was it was nasty. It was it was vicious. I had I had everything uh, powder coated black, like all the pegs, all that stuff. Anyways, um, so I'm living with a family member. You know what I'm saying? Just I got all my stuff in a little bedroom, but I got my bike, and I'm just living it up. You know what I'm saying? I gotta go to work in D.C. this day, and I go outside, and it's like hot as already in the morning I'm like, dang you know and i went outside and i didn't I, I remember i'll never forget this i'll never forget this i went outside and i was like man it's so hot and i had my stuff ready to go to work whatever you know what i mean my little book bag whatever you know what i'm saying because i'm just on a motorcycle you gotta like take everything with you but you gotta like low-key like take nothing you know and Unless you want to have a whole bunch of stuff. And I, I I like riding, like, feeling free. You know what I mean? So, anyways, I was like... And, and listen, days before, maybe weeks before, I don't know how long before this happened, this day, I was given a motorcycle jacket. And I'll never forget this either. I was given a jacket by a friend of mine. Um, and... At another time, if need be, I can reveal his name. Come, put a comment down below if you want to know his name. Maybe I'll answer it. Get, get, like, all right. So this is this is what I need in order for me to answer any questions from now on in my stories. I need a thousand. I need a thousand uh, followers. Until then, I'm not paying attention to no comments from nobody. Until I got a thousand of y'all, and and, and 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 all this game I'm giving y'all is starting to get monetized to where I'm start, I'm telling you, I'm not going to sit out here and, and, and sell myself. But what I'm telling you is, I will put myself out there and, and let y'all buy it. But let me get a little something from it, damn shit. Anyways, I'm just talking about... In, regards to views. I'm only at like 300 followers. I need like a thousand in order to start getting stuff rolling. So help me get started. That's all I'm saying. In another words. It's all about communication, right? So I was given this motorcycle jacket by a friend. Comment down below if you want to know the name. And um, I had worn it you know, maybe a couple times. And something told me like Wear your jacket today. I'm like, all right. Now, look, I'm going to tell you. I was like 
you know how we used to do it when I, when I was there? It was so bad. We used to park our bikes. When we would get to the city, we would park them on the sidewalks, right? Right outside the building. Like right outside the building that I went in, that we hung out the stoop, that we sat on every day. When we talked to the homeless people, we talked to everybody. I met uh, uh, Richmond Punch. I remember he was walking through. Uh, he, he plays the violin. Dope, dope violin player. But he was just walking through the street saying what's up to people. I'm like, that's crazy. But anyways, so like it was wild, you know. Like wheelies, burnouts, like all types of crazy stuff. I'm trying to like really wreck. Like a hundred miles an hour was nothing. A hundred and sixty miles an hour was like going fast at that point. You know what I mean? Like until you get to like one sixty, like you really not even doing nothing for real. You know, I'm doing seventy right now, and I just took off at a light. You know, so it just like speed is nothing. You know, all I'm saying is shit was crazy. So, something told me, like, wear your jacket today. I'm like, all right. I go back in the house. I got to go through this whole thing to get the key, blah, blah, blah. You know, because it's not my house. You know what I mean? Like, I got to do all this extra stuff to get in the house. So, I get in the house. Go get the, go get the jacket. Come back out. Go to work, right? And the bike rolled up on me, boy. What's up, buddy? And uh, I go to work, ride up to work. The jacket fit perfect. It was like broken in already. It was so nice that my friend gave it. He had stopped riding and he gave it to me. He was like, bro, I'm not going to ride no more. I don't know what the reason was, but he was like, I'm not riding. And so I was like, all right. And he gave me his jacket. I was like, man, that's what's up. Go to work. Later on that day, now there's a bunch of us. Now, mind you, I work in a government building. There's thousands of employees. So, of course, like I have friends, like, and I've met people, and they also ride bikes and they also work in the same building. So, we all, they're like, yo, let's go for a ride. I'm like, all right, man, we're going to go to this, uh, this bike. Uh, it's a, it's a, it was a motorcycle shop out in Maryland, right on Central Avenue. Dang, I can't remember the name of it. Shop though. Anyways, so but we had to go to my man's house and we had to go here, blah blah blah, da da da. You know all this shit. So we driving on the bikes, going through all the fucking. I'm talking about everywhere, all through Maryland. Like it ain't nothing. It's only like three of us. You know what I mean? But we just we on bikes. You know what I mean? We riding crazy. I'm talking about splitting cars they doing they doing way more crazier shit than me because they've been riding for a long time these people is from maryland like if y'all know anything about like indian head highway like 210 like up by like where the national harbor is like all that stuff all down through there all the way down down there all the way down to like bud's creek like all that area like pg county like all that stuff man and man just like god and Anyways, so it's crazy up there, man. DC, like the it's like it's like Philly, New York, like around those areas. You know what I mean? Like they shut down the highways, like do donuts in the middle of the the, the Beltway 495, race around the Beltway, like the whole Beltway, like so the shit was crazy. Like we riding real wild, right? All day. We go up to like where the where the Redskins Stadium is, right? They take me up there and we riding around the Redskins Stadium. Now mind you, they like like I'll never forget this. They was like leaning so hard their knees was like basically about to touch, but they not touching because they like tucking them in because they ain't got no knee pads on. You know what I'm saying? But they like they take their hands and they let their hands just like lightly drag on the on the on the on the on the pavement you know what i'm saying like real real soft like barely touching like yo these motherfuckers is wow like they're doing like 80 miles an hour like linked over like this like this shit is fucking nuts and i'm over here like nervous as fuck like Aah! you know but my bike is also lower so it's a little different when you're going around turns and stuff it don't lean the same way it changes your whole center of gravity and everything right Man, I lived through some stuff, boy. 
So I'm just I'm just having flashbacks as I'm telling you this story. So so anyways, we get up and we go around the whole stadium like we do all this crazy stuff all day long. And we going through and we coming up to this light, right? And we we there's like the whole thing is like filled up with cars, like a lot of cars, like 40, 50 cars, like at this one light, right? It's a rack of them. They like backed up. It's like traffic almost because we just all got off work and it's in the city so mind you it's like everybody getting off work so cars everywhere so we all split all the cars all the way down like to get all the way to the very front of the fucking light so as soon as it turned green we're gonna go somebody had opened a door like as i'm coming down like opened it like almost hit me like as i'm coming down scared the fuck out of me Right? Like, I was mad as shit. Like, I was like, man, fuck you, da 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 blah, 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 whatever, right? I could have swear it's the same person. I don't know, because I don't know if anybody was with who hit me. So, <clears throat> we turn at the light. and we, But they, like, kind of back, like, back, like, six to ten cars back. They're not at the front. So I get up there, I tell them, like, oh, who is it? Da, da, da. Like, we about to fuck these motherfuckers up. Like, we, like, I'm trying to tell you, the people that I'm rolling with, it, it would have went down, like, for real. If, I'm like, nah, nah, I was like, nah, 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 come on, let's just go. Because we, like, right there. Like, we literally, like, as soon as we make this left, the motorcycle shop is right there on Central Avenue. is right there. Right? So... Hold on, I'm, I'm driving, so I'm kind of like paying attention to cars and everything, so just bear with me. Um, there's a lot going on. See, look, boom, there's cops everywhere, like, stuff is going on out here, so I'm just trying to relax. My tags is dead. I mean, I got the stickers on the way, but they dead on the car, so I just... Anyways... <clears throat> So we turn at the light and the motorcycle shop right there. Now, mind you, my bike is lowered. Theirs isn't. When you turn into the bike shop, from the road to the bike shop, it's like, like the entrance way is like a curb almost. Like the way, cause their, their thing is higher. Their, like their parking lot is higher than the road. So the entrance goes up like this, right? And it's like a concrete up. You know what I mean? Because it's got the thing for, I guess, the water or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they able to, like, turn at, like, a decent speed. I got to slow mad down because, like, I can't hit no bumps. Like, my shit, like, my tire is going to hit my undertail, bust my stuff. Like, my stuff is lower. It's my, it's my, my plastic's going to scrape. I got to go in, like, at an angle. So, I'm going mad slow, right? I'm almost going, like, nothing. And as soon as I go to turn my my steering wheel over, right, boom, I get hit. Pow! I don't remember nothing. All I know is I'm in the air flying, dog. I hit the ground. Boom! I land like on this side of my head and this shoulder. Pow! Hit it, roll over. I get, uh, push myself out the way. I stand up. Like, my back was mad fucked up. I was like, oh. Back, they was like, lay down, lay down, lay down. So this whole thing happened, you know what I mean? It's like mad people come. I'm like laying down, waiting for an ambulance. I get rushed to the hospital, you know what I mean? There's a whole long story with this. My man, I'm like calling my mom, telling like what happened. He called, he's like, yeah, your son was in an accident, and hang up the phone. So my mom's like freaking out. I'm back in the ambulance. I'm like, look, I need my phone. I need to call my mom. You know what I mean? I call my mom. She's like, oh my god, oh my god. I was like, yeah, mom, I'm okay. She's like, oh my god, your friend said you were just in an accident. Hung up. I'm like, yeah, I was. I am fucked up. I'm in the ambulance, but I'm okay. She's like, okay. So she rushed up there. Long story short, I had like contusions in my in my neck. Basically, my neck. You know, bow. You know, and then it swelled up my my spinal cord. You know what I mean, right there from C6 and C7. You know, and I was almost paralyzed from the neck down. Like when the doctor came in and told me, I never forget. I just started crying when he was like, "Yo, you was this close." So I was in a neck brace for like a couple months. You know what I mean? It couldn't do sh nothing. You know what I mean? 
But anyway, and they had to pry. I heard they pry my bike out. So like a couple of days later, I get out. I see you. I go to the bike shop, and this is a crazy story too. Oh my god, this story gets crazier. So anyways. I go to the bike shop, I'm like, wow, I want to go. It was like three days later, I was in ICU. I get out, I'm like able to walk and shit. But I'm in a neck brace and shit. I'm like fucked up, like sore as fuck, you know? But I ain't had no broken bones, nothing. But this is why the, the story of the jacket is important. Because that jacket, I ain't had no scrapes, no nothing. That jacket saved everything on my body. Because if I would have just been wearing a shirt or trying to stunt wearing a white beater, like... Man, I would have been fucked up. So, if you ride a motorcycle, wear a leather jacket. Because you never get no. And I've wore all of them. I've wore no shirt down in Myrtle Beach at Bike Week. No shirt. Riding around doing crazy stuff. No helmet. No shirt. Riding down the highway with goggles on. Doing 90, 100 some miles an hour. Like, yo, man. And I've seen people fall. And it's nasty, bro. It's nasty. Right, so anyways, so the jacket came in handy, right? And I came out the thing unscathed, except for the contusions. My mom freaked out. And and, and this is crazy too, too. Another thing about this story, like my my wife that I ended up marrying had came to see me, but when she came to see me, I ain't even let her come up because I had some other some other girls there that was visiting me that was that we were supposed to pick up but I wasn't married to my wife me and my wife you know we was just friends but we wasn't like together you know what I'm saying but we was just we always been friends since middle school you know and had dated before but we was not together you know what I'm saying so I was going to go pick up this other little joke which was Another crazy story. Shout out to Cameron for fucking his neighbor, goddamn. Because I was actually, it was a neighbor of mine, of the family member, that I was going to go pick up. And one of her friends that my man was going to pick up, that we were supposed to pick up after the whole, the whole, uh, we went to the store thing. But then the whole accident. So we never even got to pick them up. So they came to visit me. So when they came to visit me, it was like, uh, day like four or five after I got out of ICU you know what I'm saying like they came to visit me or whatever and uh so also because I couldn't have no visitors so then also to my wife that ended up marriage she was gonna come visit but I ain't even let her come up man I felt fucking terrible about that bro like I've done her wrong on two times like I really did her really fucked up and I really I don't know how if, if those times really bother her but I just know that I fucked up because I should have been like yo y'all gotta go like she gotta come cause she was at the time that was my mm. from Nicaragua too mm. shout out to the real Rick Ross anyways so I go to look at the bike my bike is like the whole like back end of the tail like you know how it's just like this at kind of like an angle where the drone was like straight up and down and and uh, so I go in and they got my bike at the bike shop. They kept it for me. You know what I mean? They told me they were like, yeah, they had the pride. They were everybody they were like, oh shit, you still alive? Like we thought you was gonna die. We thought you died. Everybody acting all crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm this little white boy like walking in. You know what I mean? Because I was young at the time. I'm like, I don't know, 18, 19, 20. I don't know, something like that. I was young. But I come in and and it was just crazy, man. It was, but it was all love, man. It was all love. Like even after the accident, like everybody around me, like I remember them all asking me questions, like, yeah, "Is everything okay?" Da, 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 da. Uh, you know, what's your name? Just they would ask me all these questions, right? And I was answering everything fine, you know. And they were like, you know, pressing on certain stuff, like, "Does this hurt?" Because they were like, "Lay still, don't move your neck, don't move your back, da, da, da. just lay still," and. Until the ambulance got there And one of the questions they asked me They were like Who's the president and At the time it was George Bush And there was so much shit going on And I was like Fucking George Bush And everybody just started Fucking laughing You know Cause everybody's like Freaking out But I'm like being a comedian Like always like Joking around Having a good time Right Anyways <clears throat> So I'm Trying to think where I was In the story Oh so I walk in To go see my bike and it's in the back of the shop, right? Where all the mechanics is, all this stuff. They got my bike back there. I go, I'm like, damn, my shit is fucked up. I look over 
and it's one of my old neighbors from when I was a kid. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I was like, ever since I was young, elementary school, you know what I mean, middle school, I was always cutting grass, pushing a lawnmower, making money. Lawnmower, weed eater, eventually got a blower, you know, gas can, all that shit. Like, made a little business. I was hustling, you know. But one of the guys, he used to work on, like, everybody's bikes. Like, Man, it was like straight Rough Riders in my neighborhood, man. I swear to God, I'm not I'm not lying. The dude had like a two-car garage and it was always like packed with bikes. Like 20, 30 fucking bikes. He would polish their frames and do all this shit. So he would like, he would do even like take the motors, everything out to the whole frame and polish the whole frame. Or he would polish it on with the thing on. Man, it was crazy. So anyways, when I was a child... You know, his grass was like mad long. And I would always try to get like everybody's grass. He would always like cut his own grass, cut his own grass. One day he was like, all right, kid. He was like, all right, I'm going to let you cut my grass. You know what I'm saying? He let me cut his grass, right? And cut his grass. And this is the other crazy thing about him. He was dating this girl that her daughter was the daughter of this chick now she was like a senior and i was like in l in, in not elementary i was in uh like middle school she was like a senior or, or like she was in high school or something but her name was comment down below y'all want to know her name like, i remember her name too i don't remember her last name though but i remember her first name she was bad big titty white girl blonde oh man i used to fantasize about her oh my god but anyways, and she used to live in the neighborhood, but she was like mad older. Like everybody ain't like, unless you knew, you ain't know. But I knew. I, anyways, so he let me cut his grass. He was like, well, how much you going to charge me? I was like, all right, well, let me look at what you want done. Because I told her, I was like, let me look at it. He was like, all right. The backyard ain't been cutting in a while. He's like, but go ahead. The gate unlocked. Da, da, da. So I go and look at it. Grass fucking over my waist in the back. I'm like, oh, shit. He trying to get me. Like, I've done this before. People don't cut their backyard. Then you be out there. You be having to cut with the with the wheels. Uh, the Only the back wheels up. And you just pushing the wheel, the, the, the lawnmower like this basically against the grass and, and getting it to chop up and get cut up and stuff later on i mean i learned to like weed eat it first knock it down whatever knock it down in clumps that's besides the point i'm young at this time i'm like 12 years old so i'm like i don't know like 60 bucks he was like all right da, da, da. so i cut it cut the grass the front yard it wasn't bad backyard took forever i cut that shit like three four fucking times because even though i cut it and i wasn't happy with it like i had to shoot open shit was shooting all over me everything but i was like dog shit yeah dogs i remember that shit you know what i mean but it was like i ain't give a fuck i was like man if i get his grass this shit would be so fucking dope i'd be around all these bikes and shit because at the time you know what i started doing what i was doing i was polishing motherfuckers uh spokes on they on their bikes and, and detailing their bicycles bicycles i was washing i would wash their bike and then polish up all the uh chrome aluminum all that stuff with chrome polish that i would go and buy and i would polish that shit up with my dremel tools everything i remember that shit I swear to god i would detail motherfuckers bike and they would and they would pay me swear to god on everything i would make money doing that shit back then i'm just trying to tell y'all this is correct all right so anyways i look over and he a mechanic I'm like 20 some years old. I'm in Maryland. We like to put this in trajectory. It's like, it's like being in, man, I don't even know. Cause this is like, this is like a minute away. It's like, it's like between like Baltimore and DC almost the distance that we talking about. Like we talking about a little suburb in, in Virginia versus uh, in, in Manassas versus being in like Maryland like right next like right on the outskirts of DC like right where the Redskins Stadium is in Maryland and all that stuff right like right there like it was just crazy I look around, like, oh she's like damn it was just wild that's not even the story so here's the story right so lady hit me it was her fault. I ain't do nothing wrong. She hit me. She was going like 40 some miles an hour. Fuck me up. Threw me like 15 thing, 15 feet off the bike. Laying on my shit. She almost ran me over. I heard her. 
pushed myself out of the way, got out of the way, came away unscathed, you know what I mean? Ended up getting a lawyer, right? And Because mad lawyers was contacting me. I ain't even had to reach out to nobody. I was just getting letters like, yeah, we heard you. So I ended up picking this one law firm. And this is what happened. This, this is the reason why I'm telling you this whole story. I know this is long, 25 minutes, so what? I don't care. There's a lot of knowledge I'm giving you right now because there's a lot of crazy shit in that story that happened that, like, you see all the connections over time, like, to all the different people, like, with my wife, da da da, all the story, like, this whole experience, right? I'm just talking about, like, the energy that I always had, right? Like, how shit, like, always kind of connecting, like, Anyways, so it comes down to the settlement, like, and I'm really not getting nothing because she got like minimum insurance, and it's like you either take this or we gotta like go after her, like sue her. But then it's like you don't get nothing guaranteed, so it's like if she don't got nothing, you don't get nothing. And it's like if she got basic insurance, it's like what am I gonna take from her? You know what I mean? This is what I'm thinking to myself. I'm like. Cause I ain't got nothing, you know what I mean? Motherfucker sue me, like they, they not gonna get nothing but my debt. You know what I'm saying? If they if that can transfer, you know what I'm saying? You anybody wanna sue, let me know. I, I comment down below. I I'll, I'll, I'll send you my number. You can sue me right now, and then that way you can take all my debt with you. <laughs> Cause I ain't got shit right now. You know you, you dig me? So, anyways, it came down. They fighting the whole case, whatever. They, everything gets paid, all the doctor bills, all the, all the, uh, the, my bike, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, the time off work, da, 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 so the settlement come out, and it was like 50 grand that I got, that we got, we got like the whole thing, right, they gave the whole thing, they gave us, the, the insurance was like, yeah, take the whole thing, so we got the whole thing, but this is what y'all gotta understand, all that shit gotta get paid. The, the 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 doctors, all the doctor bills, all that shit come out that fifty grand, right? Like you gotta pay the lawyers, you know what I'm saying? And they get half, whatever you get, they get half. And I knew that going in, I'm like, damn, right? So this is this is the letter I get. I get my check. I'm telling y'all this whole story for this right here. I get my check and I get the letter from the lawyer. And it's like, as soon as I get the check and I open whatever, I get a call from the lawyer. They're like, yeah, uh, we saw you got receipt of the thing, whatever. Look, this is, this is what happened. This is what the situation. And they had already talked to me. I already knew the whole thing. And I knew how much I was getting. I got more. And it wasn't much more. It was only like a couple grand more. It wasn't much more. But instead of getting like 13 or 16,000 I got like 19,000 out of the 50 right and at the time that was like a lot of fucking money but what happened was <clears throat> this is what the lawyer said look after we divvied it up 50 50 like we was getting more money than you and instead of us doing that we're gonna give you half of what it is after everything da 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 you know so we're not gonna take 25 and then you get uh, 13 like we're not gonna do that you know like we're gonna take this and you're gonna get that and then we both gonna get the same thing you know so whatever I got like that's what they ended up getting like the lawyers and I was man that was I was like yo that was what's up I wasn't even gonna argue with that nothing I'm like that's 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 what's up so I said all that to say this when you know that you in a position Where you're not the one in need. Shout out to you if you stayed at the end of this video. We almost hitting the 30 minute mark. And I'm sorry for the video looking all kind of crazy. My front of my camera broke the screen and it cracked just a little bit. So there's like this little crack going through. So it makes it look weird sometimes with the light. But anyways, and I wanted to see the video so I could tell you this story because there's some stuff going on right now in my life. Again, in a sense, but out of my control. So, so 
let me tell you. So when you're in a position where you are not the one in need, and and say you're helping someone, say you're you're in the position where stuff. Fl- I'm sorry, I just felt something in my neck, swear to God. Where you, uh, where you're trying to help someone that's in need, that, and you want to help them. You've taken it, you've accepted it as like, I've accepted this, I'm going to help this person, I'm going to help them. You know, whatever whatever this is. In this instance, it's the lawyer saying, "Man, this month." And see, I'm always, I'm always. Look at this. Look at this nut job right here. You freaking dope. I'm always in my rear view. This guy almost hit me. He's over here weaving in and out of traffic. But anyways, the lawyer was in a position where it's like, even though it's their job, they lawyers, right? It's their job to like sue and know the law and give people what rightfully should be theirs when something happened. Like I could have died, you know what I'm saying? Like, and all I got was like nothing, like twenty grand. And it was like, if you take this, like this is all you gonna get. So it's like now, like the issues with my neck, my back, cause my back is real fucked up. Like I got a lot of mad scar tissue in my lower back from like. Like where the impact happened But my neck was like where it almost like broke at You know what I'm saying So or whatever And <clears throat> But they in a position where it's like We here trying to help people And not all the time I mean I understand yeah lawyers And people take advantage of people And abuse the system and this and that But these people were actually trying to like Help me You know what I mean Because I was fucked up. Like, I'm a kid. Like, I got insurance and everything. And this is why you got insurance for something like this happening. You know? Thank, thank the Lord, like, nothing happened. Like, I ain't die. Like, nothing like that, you know? And, <clears throat> and, uh, like, they big time. They got millions, this, that. Like, so this, this ain't nothing. This is another little drop in the bucket for them. This ain't no big case. They ain't getting no hundreds, no millions. You know what I'm saying? They ain't getting nothing. You know? And they're like, look, we're not going to take more than you. We're going to split this with you. You know, we're going to look out for you. At minimum. At minimum. We're going to look out for you. We're going to make sure that we not get more than you. People out here, man. So, so take that lesson. When you're in a position to help somebody and you want to help them, really for real help them. Don't be like, man, I'm really kind of getting over and they don't even know about it and they can't do nothing about it or whatever it is that or a combination or whatever. Like, be a good person, man. The other thing is, stay loyal. Cause I should have, I should have, I should have kicked them up, them, them girls that I was dealing with. But, but it's like I shouldn't have kicked them out because they was my friends too at the time, you know. And it was just awkward. Like, what am I going? It was like, nah, you can't come up here right now. I ain't know what to say. <laughs> like, I ain't know what to do. Like, I'm like in an awkward situation. Like, they all show up at the same fucking time. And the other thing is too. Years down the road, I was fucking this girl, and, and, and my wife at the time, me and her, was dealing with each other. She trying to, it was right around the same time. She trying to come into, come in the house, and my another jumped downstairs. I'm like, oh no, 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 go out the house. And she pregnant at the time, not by my baby though, but she was over at my house. I'm like, whoa, 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 you gotta go. And I, you know what I mean? I wasn't loyal then either. So stay loyal to people, man. But it's like when people put you in, here's the other thing with that too, people put you in situations 
It's like, yo, I told this chick mad times, like, I wanted to be with her, but she didn't want to be with me. And then she go get pregnant. Uh, she went call me. She like, oh, yeah, now I know, like, how good you are. And, uh, even though, eh, whatever, it's too late now. Man, all I'm saying is be good to people if you really care about them. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you in business too, when you in business doing stuff, because that's that's good for them. I'll never forget that. Anybody need a lawyer? I will always recommend them. You know, uh, it's like Stein Sterling up in Maryland. Stein Sterling, Sterling Stein. I don't know something like that. But anyways, when you in business, treat your employees right. Treat your customers right. And don't be out here working for nothing. Don't do that. I got to wrap this thing up. This is 35 minutes. I don't know. Anybody like, comment, subscribe. I got way more stories. This was just a little story about the motorcycle thing. And I wanted to tell you about the jacket because here's the thing. The jacket, man, that thing saved, man. All, only scratches I had was like right here on my hands from when I pushed off because when I hit the pavement I'm rolling right I'm like tumbling and the car is like still coming at me like and you can hear Err! like she trying to stop and I pushed myself out the way and I got up I was like oh my back she was crazy man. she was crazy but if I didn't wear that jacket I would have been way more fucked up because I would hit that ground and it would have been no no elbow pads and all that stuff so when my elbows would have hit or my shoulder would have hit or all this stuff would have hit there would have been nothing no type of padding not just the leather i'm talking about the the little the little plastic pads that be in there like them shits had it like, or foam pads or whatever because them shits helped too i still got that jacket fuck that i'm never getting rid of that jacket I got rid of one jacket I regret getting rid of. It was a it was a, a red and black Averex jacket. It had the like cloth on the on the middle on the inside and the and the sleeves was black leather. The cloth was red, it was red and black. I got it from my man. At the time he was like he was like an older dude, you know what I'm saying? He was like coming through. He would he, I was at I was working at the shoe store. And that's another story. I'll get out of here, man. Y'all wanna hear about the Red Avery story. I'll talk to you. It's it's not nearly as long. Not as long as this. This was a crazy story. But there was a lot in there. There was a lot in there. But I had you to understand. Bro, I almost died. No, I'm just joking. I was just trying to do something funny real quick, but <sighs> Dang, this was a long route. Still not at work. Dang! Thinking about moving. Thinking about relocating. What y'all think about that relocating? Where should I re relocate to? Comment down below. Even though I'm not gonna read them. Uh, comment down below. Where 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 should I relocate to? So this is the thing. My ideal situation would be in San Diego, but I ain't got shit set up to be in San Diego. So I gotta stay over here where I got shit connected. Like where I'm at. Like there's a. Yo, I got shit to do today. Whoa. All right, peace. Y'all have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. If you don't know Jesus, if you want to know him, hit me up. Ask me. I We'll figure it out. I know it's just, you just really got to want it and just say a simple little thing. Just accept them in your life. Be like, yo, I believe that you died for my sins. And just say that and just accept them and be like, boom, that's it. Ain't nobody got to do it with you. If you want to do it by yourself, just do that. Just have a regular conversation. Be like, yo, you know what? I think you, you, you for real. Like, I'm going to follow you, you know? I'm going to end with that. And uh, I'm going to also end with this. Check out the artist that I'm, that I'm helping. Uh, I got a few things. My son is dope on Fortnite. Three years old. Nasty on Fortnite. Check those videos out. I'm going to get him his own little channel set up. But then also, too, um, I want you to go check out on YouTube, Instagram. It's The Prophet. I-T-S-T-H-A-P-R-O-F-I-T. It's the prophet. Let that be a, a sonic blessing to your ears. Have a blessed day.